Do you ever wonder why your photographs aren't improving as quickly as you'd like? Well, I've got six tips you can implement today to speed up your progress. Hey guys, today I got six tips to help dramatically improve your photography. So let's get started. Tip number one, get to know your camera. And I mean really get to know your camera. Dive into the menus, the buttons, and the dials. Find out what everything does. When you're not out shooting, spend some time, do the research, and get to know every little ins and outs of your camera. You don't need, necessarily need to go in and read your manual, but you can go on YouTube and search your camera. Chances are there's somebody that's already done a lot of the work for you, and they'll walk you through the menus, in all the different settings and it's going to make a lot easier on you. As a landscape photographer, one thing that's always important is we're chasing light and you don't want to be out in the field wasting precious time when you could be taking photos. That brings us to step number two, shoot an aperture priority. As a landscape photographer, the most important thing to me is controlling my depth of field and by shooting an aperture priority, that's what I'm controlling. Nowadays, most modern cameras do a really good job at figuring out the exposure for you, so why not let it do part of the work? Shooting an aperture priority is going to make your life a lot easier. Things are going to move along faster when you're out in the field, and you're not going to miss an opportunity to get a shot with great light. So make sure you're shooting an aperture priority, and life will be a lot easier. Tip number three, be prepared. And what I mean by that is always have your camera with you. Whether you're running in town to do some errands, or just out and about, have your camera. You never know when an opportunity is going to present itself and you want to be ready to take a shot whenever that is. And secondly, take your gear with you. When you're going out to shoot, the last thing you want to do is leave a piece of gear behind, like your tripod, filters, or batteries, SD cards, any of those things could be critical. I can't tell you how many times I've gone out to shoot and left my tripod behind and then I sure enough come to a scene where there's low light and I either gotta shoot slow shutter speed handheld or I gotta crank up the ISO and sacrifice image quality. There's nothing worse than missing a shot or having a blurry photo because you weren't prepared. So take your stuff with you, always have it on you, and you're gonna get some better images. So tip number four is perspective. And I mean change your perspective. A lot of people when they're first starting out, myself included, go out and take a lot of shots at eye level. And typically that's not going to be your best approach when you're trying to create a landscape image. And that same thing goes with your tripod. Just because the legs can extend all the way out and get the camera up to your eye level doesn't mean that you have to do it. Typically when I'm shooting with a tripod, I'm shooting really low to the ground, several inches, sometimes a few feet, maybe waist high, but I never get it up toward my eye. And I'm not saying you can't do it, but Changing your perspective, bringing the camera down a few inches, a couple feet, can make a huge impact on the quality of your image. So be creative, look at different perspectives, different point of views, and think outside the box. You're sure to come up with a better image. Tip number five, exclusion. What I mean is what you exclude from your image is just as important as what you include in your image. And this took me a long time to realize because as a landscape shooter, my idea is shooting these great big wide angle perspectives and sometimes you end up with a lot in your frame that doesn't need to be there. So when you go out next time, focus on your image, the scene in front of you, and decide what you really really like about it and then exclude everything else. Take it away whether you need to move your perspective or if you need to zoom in with your lens, clean up your image. As you can see in this image, I took a wide angle shot of Tequamanon Falls in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. You'll notice there's a lot of extra stuff in this image that's not necessary. There's a plain, boring sky up at the top. There's these branches creeping in on the edges of the frame, and it all serves as a distraction to the viewer. The most important part of this image is the waterfall and the sudsy trail floating down to the bottom of the frame. So in the second image here, you can see where I cropped in a lot and made the focal point, the waterfall in the water there. It's a lot more compelling of an image and it's gonna serve the viewer a lot better because they're not distracted by all the things that are creeping in around the edges of the frame that don't need to be there. So that brings us to tip number six, and this is the most important one that I can give you. 
And it's somewhat of a mistake that I see a lot of other people make and one that I made myself. And I call it pointless practice. When was the last time that you went out and had an idea of what you wanted to improve when you were going out to take pictures? When I first got my camera, I would grab it, run out the door around sunset, and just start snapping pictures. And day after day, week after week, nothing was changing because I wasn't evaluating what I was doing and I wasn't improving any of the skills that I wanted to learn. So when you go out, you have to have a plan of action. If you think about it, my mom takes hundreds of pictures of my kids all year long, but she's no closer to being a portrait photographer than she was yesterday, the day before, or 10 years ago. Sorry, mom, we love your pictures. But seriously, you gotta practice and you have to have an idea of what you're going out to work on. So whether it's composition, your settings, your depth of field, whatever it is, have a plan so when you come back you can evaluate your images and compare them from day to day, week to week, and see yourself improve. If you work on this tip alone, you're going to make a huge stride in your photography and your images are going to be a lot more compelling for years to come. So these are some of the mistakes that plagued me the most when I first started out. I hope some of these tips help you improve your images. Let me know what you're struggling with in the comments section. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Dude, should I call my mom and let her know that I'm making fun of her in my new video? Hey. Hey. Hey, just real quick. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm making fun of you a little bit in my new YouTube video. And wanted to make sure you were aware before you saw it. Uh, are you, are my pictures on there or just talking about me? No, just talking about you. And what are you saying exactly? Oh, you'll see in a few days. Is it insulting? No, not bad. I just wanted to let you know. Why are you doing this? Just to use me for material? Yeah, it'll be funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell our friends that right now. They're going to say, oh, that's nice of them. So when is this going to come out? Uh, sometime this week. But there's no pictures of me. No, no, there's no pictures of you. I'm just going to mention you. All righty. <laughs> All right. All right. Better not to that bad or you'll be out of the will. <laughs> All right. All right. Love All right. you. Bye. 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 Uh